From Loretto Abbey, home to the Sisters of Loretto since 1928, and the Loretto Abbey Secondary School, and with the kind cooperation of the Toronto Catholic District School Board, the National Catholic Broadcasting Council presents Daily Mass. Greetings and welcome to all of you. The televising of this Mass is made possible by a contribution from two donors. The first is the son of Gino Botero of Woodbridge, Ontario, in memory of his father Gino, who passed away on February 19, 2012. The second are Hernan and Flora Akin from Brandon, Manitoba, a member of the, the in memory of the deceased members of the Akin and Lewis families, and in thanksgiving for all blessings received. Our thanks to the donors for this gift. And so we begin as we should always begin, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Amen. As we begin our celebration this day, we acknowledge that we are in the presence of our God, a God who has gifted us so much, and a God who is so merciful and gracious, who invites us to forgive ourselves and to forgive another. And so, asking for God's forgiveness, we begin. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And you came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And let us pray. Grant that your faithful, O Lord, we pray, may be so conformed to the paschal observances that the bodily discipline now solemnly begun may bear fruit in the souls of all. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord came to me. If the wicked turn away from all their sins that they have committed and keep all my statutes and do what is lawful and right, they shall surely live. They shall not die. None of the transgressions that they have committed shall be remembered against them. For the righteousness that they have done, they shall live. Have I any pleasure in the death of the wicked, says the Lord God, and not rather that they should turn from their ways and live? But when the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity and do the same abominable things that the wicked do, shall they live? None of the righteous deeds that they have done shall be remembered. For the treachery of which they are guilty and the sin they have committed, they shall die. Yet you say, the way of the Lord is unfair. Hear now, O house of Israel, is my way unfair? Is it not your ways that are unfair? When the righteous turn away from their righteousness and commit iniquity, they shall die for it. For the iniquity that they have committed, they shall die. Again, when the wicked turn away from the wickedness they have committed and do what is lawful and right, they shall save their life because they considered and turned away from all the transgressions that they had committed. They shall surely live. They shall not die. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. And Jesus went up the mountain, and after he sat down, his disciples came to him, and he taught them, I tell you, unless your righteousness exceeds that of the scribes and Pharisees, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. You have heard that it was said to those of ancient times, you shall not murder, and whoever murders shall be liable to judgment. But I say to you that if you're angry with a brother or sister, you will be liable to judgment. And if you insult a brother or sister, you will be liable to the council. And if you say, you fool, you will be liable to the hell of fire. So when you're offering your gift at the altar, if you remember that your brother or sister has something against you, Leave your gift there before the altar and go and first be reconciled to your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. Come to terms quickly with your accuser while the two of you are on the way to court or your accuser may hand you over to the judge and the judge to the guard and you will be thrown into prison. Truly I tell you, you will never get out until you've paid the last penny. And this is the Gospel of the Lord. I think we need to recall that Matthew, Matthew is a scribe who became a disciple. And in his Gospel, we see his respect for the old law and his enthusiasm for the new vision of Jesus. Matthew wrote in the 80s, about 50 years after the death of Jesus, when the Christian community was facing very heavy criticism from the official Jewish leadership, claiming that Jesus' teaching was destructive of all that they cherished in Judaism. And when Matthew writes, he's very anxious to show that Jesus didn't come to abolish the law and the prophets, but rather that he is their completion. Fulfill in that context means to comply with and to go beyond the law. In essence, it means to intensify its motivation. Barbara Reed says of Jesus that his is not a lax interpretation, but one that is even more demanding than theirs. To truly keep the law, one must go beyond it. And Jesus speaks to his disciples about the little things that, they can, that can erode their relationship with God and with others and how they can escalate into major offenses. In essence, Jesus warns us that our holiness must exceed that of the scribes and Pharisees for whom holiness means dotting the I's and crossing the T's. And caught up in rules and regulations, the scribes and the Pharisees, like many people, 
seek security by adhering to the details of the law rather than to the reality that prompted the law's existence. Judy Canato calls it a checklist spirituality that requires little reflection and seemingly is motivated by the need for certitude more than for the desire to love and to be a loving individual. Today's gospel is taken from the Sermon on the Mount, which is an extremely demanding synthesis of Jesus' preaching. When Jesus said before each of the commandments, you have heard that it was said, he was inviting the disciples and ourselves to go deeper. In this particular gospel today, it focuses on the first of the four commandments, and Jesus addresses the need to diffuse anger before it reaches a murderous stage. He says that to avoid insults is primary, and secondly, if there has been a rupture, a face-to-face -face reconciliation should be the next step. And the final word is that conflict should not be allowed to escalate to the point of litigation. Our offering at the altar is worthless if we deprive or forget others. Notice that others and attention to them is always the reference point. Reconciliation with others implies respecting their rights and opening our hearts to concrete gestures. Gutierrez says that we mustn't stop there. We have to come back to present our offering to complete the circle. Prayer and commitment go hand in hand, and the, the Eucharist and the celebration of the Eucharist demands that we create human solidarity. The focus, I think, of Jesus is to encourage his disciples to exceed those who are intent only on being holy according to the law and to be attentive to attitudes that contribute to evil intentions taking root in our hearts. All holiness begins with life. Protection of it, appreciation of it, and nurturing of it. Anger, contempt, abusive language, expressions of violence and humanness sever the bonds of Jesus' family, where all are entitled, entitled to forgiveness, mercy, and reconciliation. In Jesus' kingdom, to dehumanize others is a sin. It's a sin against holiness, against a life of faithful virtue. It would be helpful, I think, to recall that the word for reconciliation in Greek means to walk together again. Reconciliation takes precedence over worship. In fact, we're probably incapable of true worship, of prayer or standing in the presence of God or the community if we are at odds with someone, if we are at odds with the other. And with great clarity, Megan McKenna writes that where others stand in relation to us must be of crucial importance for it reveals whether we are holy and virtuous according to Jesus' standards of judgment. I think one of the most outstanding examples of reconciliation that we've seen in this century occurred some 36 years ago. On February the 11th, 1990, when Nelson Mandela was being released from prison, having served 27 and a half years in prison, and the crowd had gathered and millions were watching on television and waiting for Mandela to appear. And he wasn't appearing, and people began, as time passed by, there was no sign of him, and people were wondering if he was actually going to be released. They were later informed that the delay was due to a very emotional gathering and saying goodbye and expressing gratitude to his guards. Mandela believed that hostility toward them was self-defeating and that everyone, even our enemies, can change. In his freedom speech that evening, he reminded everyone that we can all imprison ourselves behind the bars of prejudice and narrow-mindedness. And I think Jesus in this reading is urging us to go beyond the minimum, the superficial, for that is really what love is all about. Judy Canato sums it up writing, we are God's instruments, co-creative partners in the divine design in which we live, and move and have our being. To choose life is to choose love. To choose love is to choose connection. To live connected to one another in love, we must live differently. Please join me in our prayer. 
As we gather this day, we remember those many hundreds of people who have written in asking that their intentions be remembered in this Eucharist. And so for all of them and for their intentions, we pray to the Lord. The Lord hear our A few minutes before Mass, I went in to visit Sister Doreen Kirby, a wonderful friend who is getting pre preparing herself for her encounter with God. And I want to give thanks for her life as a testimony of what we have been speaking about in the Gospel. She and so many others give us a wonderful example of what it means to live in love, to live in integrity. And so I, for her, I want to give thanks. And for any of you this day who have a loved one or a family friend who is getting ready to meet God, to go home to God, we give thanks for them. We give thanks for their life and the way that they've touched us. And for that, we pray to the Lord. We pray this day that we know peace in our hearts, peace in our homes, and in our communities. And we pray in a very special way for the refugees who live such an insecure existence that they one day may know peace. And for all of them, and for ourselves, we pray to the Lord. Lord and all this we ask through Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread that we offer you. Fruit of the earth, the work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God And blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine that we offer you, fruit of the vine, the work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Thanks, Simon. And pray, my brothers and sisters, that this sacrifice, mine and yours, may become acceptable to God, the Father Almighty. May the Lord accept this sacrifice into our hands, like the praise of the Lord is in the for our Lord and the Lord of the Church. Accept the sacrificial offerings, O Lord, by which, in your power and kindness, you willed us to be reconciled to yourself, and our salvation to be restored through Christ our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It's truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For you have given your children a sacred time for the renewing and purifying of their hearts, that freed from disordered affections, they may so deal with the things of this passing world as to hold rather to the things that eternally endure. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. And make holy there for these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you.
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. And therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. And humbly we pray that partaking of the body and the blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Thomas, our Bishop, and the entire church. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, that we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. And faithful to the teaching of Jesus, we pray, just as he taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil and graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not in our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. And let us offer to each other a sign of that peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
With those of you at home, join with me now in this prayer by St. Augustine. God of our life, there are days when the burdens we carry chafe our shoulders and weigh us down. When the road seems weary and endless, the skies gray and threatening, when our lives have no music in them, our hearts are lonely, and our souls have lost their courage. Flood the path with light. Turn our eyes to where the skies are full of promise. Tune our hearts to brave music. Give us the sense of comradeship with heroes and saints of every age. And so quicken our spirits that we may be able to encourage the souls of all who journey with us on this road to life. To your honor and glory. Amen. And let us pray. May the holy refreshment of your sacrament restore us anew, O Lord, and cleansing us of old ways, take us up into the mystery of salvation through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us go in the peace of Christ, glorifying the Lord by our lives. Amen. Have a good day. Our thanks to our two donors for the gift of this Mass. Please remember that all requests for special prayers are read by Father Bush, Father Coots, Father Donovan, Father Lynch, and Father Fitzpatrick and your intentions are carried with them to the altar for the celebration of Holy Mass.